the winners and losers of free agency. Let's talk about that real quick. And I think we have to mention the New England Patriots when we talk about this. I mean, there's no other team that I can think of so far that has made a bigger splash in free agency than the Patriots. Let's just recap the Patriots' free agency period thus far. It all started when they re-signed Cam Newton to a one-year, $14 million contract. And people were thinking, $14 million for one year. Number one, I didn't think he was going to come back. I thought that experiment failed. I thought they were tired of Cam Newton. They were like, okay, this was a bust. Let's just move on. Let's get a quarterback in the NFL draft, which could still happen. But they bring in Cam Newton back into that New England Patriots locker room, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, he's probably going to be a backup. But like we mentioned with Tyrod Taylor earlier, $14 million, that's not backup money. It really isn't. You're going to expect Cam Newton to be the starter at least for one more year, for the New England Patriots. So what do you do at that point? You need to give him weapons at this point because we all know that Tom Brady left that Patriots team because one of the reasons was the lack of weapons and because the front office and the general manager, who is also Bill Belichick, by the way, was not doing a very good job in trying to bring in some weapons for Tom Brady. And then we saw in 2020 that all collapsed. We saw what could happen when you don't have weapons for a quarterback that's not Tom Brady. Your team gets even worse. So Cam Newton, if you want to bring him back for the 2021 season, let's sign some free agents. Who do we got? You need a tight end. I mean, Ryan, Ryan Izzo, who just got traded to the Houston Texans for a seventh round pick, he's not going to be the guy. Asiata is not going to be the guy as well. They haven't found a solid tight end since Rob Gronkowski left. Let's sign John o. Smith, an underrated tight end, athletic who played for the Tennessee Titans, could be a a force in the NFL. Let's bring him in to make us a dominant team on offense as far as the tight end position goes. Okay, John Smith, your starter. A lot of money. Four years, $50 million contract. You need some wide receivers on top of that. Let's, Let's bring in Kendrick Bourne, an underrated wide receiver, a little bit underneath the radar for the San Francisco 49ers, can still be very good for this offense. Let's bring in a, another wide receiver on top of that for Cam Newton. Nelson Aguilar, who's really improved since he's been dropping balls with the Philadelphia Eagles, had a good year with the Las Vegas Raiders. So you got two solid wide receivers right there. Okay, cool. Are we done? No. Let's bring in another tight end. Hunter Henry, which I believe was the best tight end on the market signing a three-year, $37.5 million contract with the Patriots. Head scratcher, you've got John Smith and Hunter Henry, two tight ends. Why do you need two tight ends to large contracts for this Patriots offense? Could they be reverting back to a two-tight end set? What Aaron Hernandez and Rob Gronkowski were for the Patriots a decade ago when they had so much success with that duo. I mean, you line them up in two tight end sets, bunched up in the I formation, or you can line them up wide if you wanted to as well. One outside, one in the slot, one at the tight end position. It doesn't matter. The possibilities are endless. This offense is getting better and better and better, and they're still not done because according to multiple reports, they've tried to make a push for a star running back. Now, they haven't released the names of the star running backs that they pursued. There have been two of them. But we presume that it was either Chris Carson or Kenyon Drake, one of the top running backs on the free agent markets at this point. They're also making some moves on the defensive side of the football as well, signing Jalen Mills from the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, Devon Gacho from the Miami Dolphins, and then also uh, trading for Trent Brown. So their offensive line, they're trying to bolster as well and protect Cam Newton. Guys, there's a trend going on here. They want this offense to be great so that they can they can compete in the AFC East. Are they better than the Buffalo Bills at this point? No, absolutely not. The Bills are obviously the better team getting to the Final Four last year. But can they compete with the Buffalo Bills? Make it a little bit harder for them in winning the AFC East? Potentially. It's possible. I mean, they face twice a year, and I would not be surprised if one of those games, the Patriots pulled off the upset with this offense. I mean, year two, With Cam Newton in this offense. Trent Brown coming in from a trade. 
all these weapons, four weapons for Cam Newton to play with. I'm liking what Bill Belichick and the general manager of Bill Belichick is doing in that Patriots offense. So that's why I believe that the Patriots are the biggest winners so far in free agency. That's my thoughts. But hey, if you guys have any sort of uh, comments or opinions or anything, leave a comment down below, interact with us, and let us know who are your biggest free agency uh, winners thus far, which team has had the best free agency period in 2021.